All right, today we're gonna to be replacing the fuel line on this old uh, T-35, so let's just jump in and get going. fuel you just basically start seeping all right there and then blows down everywhere it's a big mess all right make sure the fuel is uh turned clockwise so it's off if you have any question on whether or not your fuel shut off works make sure you put a pan underneath that can catch at least as much fuel as you have in there this is a 7 16 flare nut so, all right one end off and no leaking as you can see which is good I've had off and on here doing the carb work I've been doing recently. Probably a little bit of on the line that's going to leak out, but I had some cardboard there to catch it. Yeah, not much in there. All right, so now we're just going to carefully fish this thing out, which I'll need both my hands for probably to get that. So pull that thing out of there. I ended up popping off that uh, air intake tube to get this thing um, some more space for pulling this out so you might have to go ahead and do that uh, again you want to want to fish this thing out without bending it too much because one you're gonna have to get the new piece in there and then also we're going to be using this as our um, template for copying the new one free and clear here i'm going to remember that fish in from the left hand side of the tractor all right let's get this thing copied first off i want to save my knees so now that's taken care of, um, get yourself some steel wire. This is just cheap um, rebar tie wire. Anything that you can uh, basically form and it's gonna stay put is what you want. So we're gonna grab ourselves, get ourselves a few feet of this. We're gonna take our old fuel line. This is quarter inch line, so we'll go for that in a second actually, but let's go ahead. So basically what we're gonna do here, we're gonna take this piece of ductile steel wire. We're gonna start here at the end of the flare. And we're gonna come down. And we're just gonna make sure that end doesn't slip down. It's not a perfect science here, but we're basically just gonna keep working our way down, bending this piece of steel wire to match the profile of this old line here so you can see coming down here we got this first couple bends in there and again it doesn't have to be absolutely perfect but you get the idea hopefully chop that off so now what we can do Take and undo everything that we just did with the bending, which is a good thing. Oh, my tape measure and also got some of the other tools I need, so win-win. So for this thing, basically that measured out uh, 27 inches. So uh, the piece of line that I bought was the... You can pick these up anywhere. I'll put a link below. I'm sure Amazon has them. So this is a quarter inch US thread standard flare line. And this is like the poly armor green one, so that'll be good. Um, you can just use regular steel if you need to, but 51 inches was all they had that was on the shelf. So I went ahead and got that. I think it was about 10 bucks or so. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna cut this probably just a little bit longer than 27. Um, I'll leave myself an extra, so I mess up the flare space. So yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and cut this 28 inches. Um, just make up my mind, do that. And I'm actually gonna cut the end off that is, does not have a sticker on there. So that way, when I save the leftover tag piece, I have the sticker on there telling me the line that it is, the size. For cutting, uh, lots of options, hacksaw, chop saw, whatever you got. Um, basically, at the end of the day, uh, we just wanna make sure that this is squared, deburred, um, inside and out. So I'm just gonna use just the regular old tubing cutter here. Um, you can pick these up anywhere, coal body. See, I probably got that at Lowe's, but I'll put a link down below. Any one of these will work for you. So basically, 
So then you take a, it's just a standard uh, T-handle reamer. I'll put a link down below. I think this one I got, I don't know, Harbor Freight or something. But, all right, that's solid. The last step, I'm just gonna take a flat file here. So we got a nice D bird, pretty much completely flat um, tube to work with there. And that's important. You just want to make sure you got a nice square clean D bird cut. All right, so let's get into flaring. All right, so for a quick sanity check, I took, after we cut the tube, I slid off the two flare nuts and went out to the tractor and confirmed that they threaded into the um, carburetor and fuel pickup with no issues. That'd be very depressing too cut and flare a beautiful fuel line just to have the wrong flare nut and have to cut it all apart and start over. On that same thread of taking it all apart and starting over, always, 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 you'll probably remember this the hard way like I have, make sure you install the flare nuts in the correct direction and onto your tube before you flare. And then also I'll remind you again that after it's flared, before we start bending, that you put them in their proper spots because I've learned the hard way. I'll well, do that. So uh, for flaring, the tool is very basic. Uh, double flare, uh, double tube flaring toolkit, double tube flaring toolkit, okay? Um, so that's from Pittsburgh from Harbor Freight. You can see I got, I don't know, I collected a hodgepodge of these over the years. Um, they're cheap, I'll put a link on Amazon down below. So the way that this works is, this is quarter inch tube. So your, uh, your holding block here is gonna be marked quarter inch. So we will slide, after confirming our flare nuts are on, we will slide this into the quarter inch area here. It's got some little grippies in there to help hold it tight. Okay, so it'll come with adapters. Um, so button adapters. So typically, let me read the directions for your kit, but the height for protrusion is usually the shoulder height, so. All right, so that tube protrusion there is set to exactly the same height as this shoulder. So now we're gonna go ahead, I'm just gonna put a little bit of a lightweight oil on there, just some air compressor oil onto the end of the tube now that we're clamped. I wait until after it's clamped, because I don't want it to interfere with the clamping power of that device. Put a little bit of oil right onto this quarter inch die here. So you can see we've got the button inserted into there, put the cone on and everything's oiled up. So now we're just gonna tighten this up until this piece, the shoulder is flat against the tool there. That'll do the first half of our flare. All right, I kind of needed the crank down that, but you can see that shoulder is pushed down flush right against the tool, nice and square all the way around. Not the prettiest, but definitely did the, uh, did the job there for getting the first part of the flare down there. So I'm gonna go ahead and Clean that up a little bit with my rag and we'll get ready for round two. All right, I got that cleaned up a little bit and you can see, so that's what you're looking for. The first first half there, it's just kind of a nice bubble um, going around there. Nothing looks chewed up, bent or uh, torn, so. Back in the holder here. Just gonna put a little oil, one drop of oil on the cone there. Go ahead, this part's easy. Just gonna go ahead, reinstall it. So you can see that that cone just threads right in there. Go ahead. And this one, you just drive the cone, drive the cone down. This one, you do want to watch it. Um, you just want to make sure, basically kind of go down until it seats and you don't want to go too incredibly over tight because it can, um, it can crack that flare. Our flare right there. That's the factory flare on the other end of the tube that we cut off. So they look about the same. That double flare is folded back in on itself. So we're gonna call this good. We'll go get bended. Here's where it gets into a little bit of an art. because so we're just gonna be copying this and making sure we got all the dimensions and three planes correct, or as good as we can get. So for bending, there's a bazillion choices for benders, tube benders. Um, this super basic one, you can pick these up anywhere, any auto parts store. I'll put a link again below to Amazon. I am an Amazon affiliate as of right now when I'm making this video. So um, if you buy through the link that I have below that does send a very small commission my way and I greatly appreciate it. But either way, uh, don't feel obligated. Just uh, pick it up wherever it works for you. Um, 
So we're going to go ahead. I'm going to start at this end here where it is um, the field peacock end because it's that short, short stubby fitting um, just because it's tighter up there. I will, ex I will drive it. I will try to drive the point home one more time. And then I can say I did my best. Um, just before you put that bend in there, make sure you put the flare nut down there. Um, yeah, because you're not going to get around the corner. So you will be cutting it off and starting over. Just make sure you do that, please. Uh, it's a lesson that you will learn if you're like me, maybe two or three times before it finally sets in. So that's as tight as I can get with this one here. It's a little bit, you know, this one definitely comes out and makes a tighter turn, but we cut an extra half inch. So I think we'll be, we'll be all right. So I'm going to make that first, you know, it looks like a 90 degree. And then basically I'm just going to sit down and we'll just uh, work it out. So yeah, again, this tubing fit, this tubing bender is a, Pretty solid for, for everything I've needed. I'm trying to see if there's a way I can hack it to get that uh that bend a little bit tighter. Yeah, maybe I'll do that and that looks good. Give me an extra quarter inch or something. There we go. It's not quite perfect, but there we go. Just really trying to make that bend tighter since it pretty much comes right out of there and goes straight down. So First 90 degree, here we go. All right, so we got our first bend in. A little tight, looks like it folded it a tiny bit, but definitely it's not gonna choke the fuel out. Still get through there just fine. So let's go ahead and sit down and just work out the rest of these. There, I spent my time, you know, figured it out. I kept flipping that piece up to the end. I probably just took out a piece of masking tape and put it there, but either way, um, you know, definitely by no means uh, perfect. Definitely by no means perfect, but you know, I think it's fairly pretty darn close to be able to tweak the rest by hand. You can see I'm roughly about that extra inch that I uh, I added on there to the end there, so I'll just have to figure out somewhere to, you know, maybe put a little slight bow in it um, underneath the tractor. I think I can easily make up that extra inch. But, you know, not too bad. Just take your time. Realize you're working in three planes, not just two. So um, tweak it. Don't rush. You should be good. So very important. Um, go ahead and clean up any uh, last-minute grit or burrs on the end. And then I'm going to take, uh, before I put this on the tractor, I will take compressed air and blow air through this thing both ways. Um, you know, a whole bunch to make sure that I get any uh, grit or junk out from um, either anything I did or left over from the factory. Um, be very silly to go through all this effort trying to work on the carb just to filthy it up with a dirty fuel line. So I'm gonna go ahead and clean that out and then we'll get this thing fitted back up to the tractor. All right, so that was a little bit more of a pain than I thought it would be. I ended up having to loosen up the starter um, relay, kind of tweaking the line a little bit here. That bend, even with it making it as short as it could, it's still um, kind of came in close there, but ultimately got it to fit. Um, got the 716th nut uh, tightened up. Make sure, very careful that you don't cross thread that. Uh, you know, it took my time. I had to do it two or three times to make sure, you know, confidence that I was threaded up. Let threads were lined up correctly. Over here, you can see come down, route through. Good enough here. You can just kind of, you know, I can force it in this place without too much effort there. But before we go ahead and do that, what we are going to do is get a pan underneath and run uh, a couple ounces of fuel through that line to make sure in case we picked anything up, flushing it through and then one last flush to get any junk out of there. There we go. We got fuel coming out the end into the pan. All right, got everything cleaned up and dried off. So moment of truth, I did not bother hooking up the uh, one, two. So we're on the main fuel there. Two turns open, didn't see any drips. Now before I bothered putting that air intake back on, Figured I'd just wait and see if fuel comes pouring out. 
Haven't seen any leaks there. Typically with these, I'll snug them up, but then, you know, I'll just wait. And if I see a drip or something, I'll tighten it up a little bit more. It's easier to crank it down another fraction of a turn versus uh, stripping something out. That's dry. Hopefully fuel's rolling into the carb there. Well, I don't see anything pouring out, so that's a good sign because we were dealing with that uh, last time I did this. So I'm gonna go ahead and get that uh, air intake on there. We'll fire it up, give it a little test, see if it starts. I'm sure it won't because it's on video, but hey, let's go. Thanks for watching. If this was helpful to you, uh, make sure you go ahead, hit that like button, subscribe. I'll probably get a few more videos working on this tractor. This isn't my tractor. It's actually uh, one that I'm working on for someone else. So. I'll be a little bit limited in what I can answer question-wise, but if you do have anything, let me know. Uh, there is a TO30 in the family, so a lot of similar, uh, a lot of similar items on there. But once again, thanks for watching the uh, working here on the TO35, and take care.